Chapter 4 Creating Interior Walls and Openings In this chapter, we'll continue with the building of the interior structures, including elevator shafts and stairs, and interior partition walls with doors and windows. The basement structure has already been created to save time. We will create only the structures in the left block of the building. The right block was prepared in advance in subsequent steps. Step 1. Creating Interior Structural Walls In this step, we will create interior structural walls and add openings in circulation to the project. We will also get familiar with ARCHICAD's special snap point feature. These temporary hotspots can be used to help the creation of new elements, as well as the editing of existing ones. Select the first preset view from the Interior Structural Walls folder of the Navigator view map. In the Favorites palette, activate the Wall 5 Favorite by double-clicking its name in the list. In the Info box of the Wall tool, select the Rectangular Geometry method from among the Straight Wall Geometry methods. This method creates four walls in one step. The orthogonal rectangle we will define will set the reference lines of these walls and the wall bodies will be generated according to the wall settings. Click on the point of label 1.1 for the lower left corner of the rectangle and click on the point of label 1.2 to define the upper right corner. The four walls are generated. Make sure at the Edit Grouping Suspend Groups menu that the groups are suspended. You can also check this status at the Suspend Groups icon in the Standard Toolbar. Select the rightmost of the four walls you just created. Right-click and activate the Move, Drag a Copy command from the appearing context menu. Drag a copy of this wall to the left, to a distance of 1 foot 10 inches. To achieve this, Click any point on the floor plan, move the cursor leftward at a 180 degree angle, and enter a value of 1 foot 10 inches for distance in the tracker palette. Simply type 1-10 on your keyboard and press enter to complete the operation. Once you are done, click elsewhere to deselect the wall you've just created. With the wall tool still active, set the construction method to center in the info box. Make sure that the View, Special Snap Options, Half, and the Long Entire Element menu options are set. These options can also be activated using the Special Snap Points icon in the Standard Toolbar. Hover your mouse over the lower side of the upper horizontal wall at the point of Label 2. A small stroke appears in the middle of the lower side of the wall. The Along Entire Element option causes ARCHICAD to take into consideration the total length of that side of the wall when calculating the position of the special snap point. Select the View, Special Snap Options, Between Intersection Points menu option. Activate the Straight Wall Wall Geometry method in the Info box. Again, hover your mouse over the lower side of the upper horizontal wall at the point of Label 2. The Between Intersection Points option will set the special snap points on an edge between any two intersection points of the edge and other elements. Click on the special snap point that appeared on the lower side of the wall, close to Label 2. Move your mouse vertically downward and click again when the mouse is over the middle point of the upper side of the lower horizontal wall. The special snap point, the cursor shape, and the 90 degrees value in the angle field of the tracker show that you are at the correct location. The new wall now halves the available space. Create a new wall starting from the point defined by label 3.1 and complete the wall by clicking on the point defined by label 3.2.
Select the newly created horizontal wall by shift-clicking it. Set the construction method to right in the info box and notice the changes on the floor plan geometry of the wall. Shift-click the vertical wall starting at the point of label 1.1 to add it to the selection set. Select the Edit Reshape Intersect menu item. This will extend the two elements to their intersection point. Click elsewhere to deselect the walls. Activate the next preset view from the Navigator view map. Activate the Wall 5 Favorite in the Favorites palette. Select the Rectangular Geometry method from the Info box. Click on the point of Label 1.1 for the lower left corner of the rectangle and click on the point of Label 1.2 to define the upper right corner. Activate the next preset view from the view map. Activate the Door tool in the toolbox. Activate the Door 2 Favorite in the Favorites palette. Make sure that the special snap points are turned on and that the half and between intersection points options are selected. Change the door anchor geometry method in the info box to center. Move your cursor over the top edge of the lower horizontal wall near label 1.1 and wait until the special snap point appears. Click this point to define the center point of the door. Click at label 1.2 with the eye-shaped cursor to define its orientation. A new door is placed into the wall. Do the same with labels 2.1 and 2.2 respectively to place another door. Zoom out to investigate the results. Activate the marquee tool in the toolbox and make sure that the All Floors Marquee option is selected in the Info box. Draw a thick selection marquee around the elevator shaft walls. Activate the next preset view in the view map to open the 3D window. Make sure that the tracker is switched on on the standard toolbar. Activate the arrow tool and select the two doors in the elevator shaft wall. Click on one of the hotspots of one of the doors and select the Multiply command in the appearing pet palette. In the Multiply dialog, choose the Elevate radio button, enter 3 in the Number of Copies field, and choose the Increment radio button. Finally, click OK to leave this dialog. Click a hotspot of one of the doors. Start moving your mouse upward. Type 12 into the tracker palette. Press Enter to complete the operation. Six new doors have now been created. Select again the lowest two doors in the elevator shaft wall. Repeat the same multiply command with these doors again. In the multiply dialog, enter 1 for the number of copies. This time the doors need to be elevated downward by 12 feet. The sills of all doors are now measured relative to story 1. We need to change this so they will all be anchored to their own stories. Select the lowest two of the 10 doors. These are on the basement level. In the info box, 
click the Anchor drop-down list and select the Select Story option from the list. In the appearing dialog, select Basement and click OK to link the doors to the basement floor level. Repeat the same steps for the sets of two doors each on the second, third, and fourth stories. Activate the next preset view from the view map. Activate the stair tool from the toolbox. In the favorites palette, activate the stair one favorite. Right click anywhere on the floor plan view and activate remove marquee from the context menu. Go to the stair settings dialog by clicking on the settings dialog button in the info box. In the Preview and Positioning panel, you can set geometry settings, and in the upper right corner of the panel, you can also see a preview of how the library part will look. The vertical strip of buttons to the left of the preview window let you view the library part in 2D, 3D side view, 3D parallel view, and other views. The Parameters panel and the panel below it let you texturally and graphically set the values of parameters affecting how the library part will look and behave. Click the fourth icon from the top in the vertical strip of buttons to the left of the preview window to see a 3D shaded parallel view of the stair. This is how the stair will look in 3D. Click the Create Stair button to briefly overview ARCHICAD's advanced stair creation and configuration options. Select Stairs at the top and then the double winder you return stair type. Click OK to proceed. This opens the stair editing dialog where you can enter all geometric parameters to define your stair. The large buttons on the left take you to the various pages of the editing dialog where you can specify settings for the structure, the treads, the railing, and the 2D representation of the stair. Review the geometry settings, structure, tread, railing settings, symbol settings, and list settings tab pages. Click the fifth large button from the top. Here is where you can set the complete 2D representation of the stair, including the 2D of the stair, walking line start and end symbols, rail symbols, plus line types, pen color, and textual information to be displayed. You can also set story sensitivity so the stair will be displayed on both stories it connects. Its representation can be different on these stories as deemed necessary. Click Cancel to return to the Stair Settings dialog. Click the upmost of the vertical strip of buttons to the left of the preview window to show the floor plan symbol of the stair. You can see several small black crosses in the floor plan preview. Click on the hotspot in the upper left corner of the stair to make that hotspot the anchor of the stair when placing it. The black rectangular frame is now around this clicked hotspot. Click OK to accept the changes and leave the dialog. Click in the corner at the point of label 1 to place the stair on the floor plan. The stair is placed complete with brake line, walking line start and end symbols, railing symbols, and textual information. Notice the 2D representation of the stair and how it is dashed above the brake line. Select the stair. Select Edit, Copy, or press Ctrl or Command plus C to copy it onto the clipboard. Select View, Navigate, Stories, Go Up a Story to go to the first floor. Notice how the 2D representation of the stair is different on the upper story. Select Edit, Paste or Control plus V to paste a copy of the stair onto this story. 
click outside the marquee to accept it. Go to the second and third floors and paste the stair into both. Go to the fourth floor and select the stair. The brake line is not needed here on the topmost story, so we need to modify some settings. Open the Stair Settings dialog. In the 2D Symbol and 3D Attributes panel, click on the long horizontal button at the top and select Story Sensitivity and 2D above Home Story. Uncheck the brake line checkbox and click OK to leave this dialog. Click elsewhere on the floor plan to deselect the stair or press the escape key for the same result. We now have all our stairs placed with correct 2D representations. Activate the next preset view from the view map. Activate the Object tool. Activate the Elevator 1 Favorite in the Favorites palette. Click the Setting dialog button in the info box to open the Elevator Objects setting dialog. As you can see, the parameter panel has an elevator car group. Notice that the sixth parameter in this group is called Car Position, and this is set to 2. The reason is that the lowest story for the elevator is the basement, and we want to have the elevator car's 3D model one story above, on the first floor. In the upper left corner of the Story and Elevator Door Position Settings panel, the number of stories is set to 5. In the Floor Plan and Section panel, under Floor Plan Display, the Show on Stories field is set to All Stories. As a result, the 2D symbol of the elevator will be displayed on all five stories. Click Cancel to leave the dialog. Click at the points of Label 1 and Label 2 to place two elevator objects.